Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a manual HDR. That's right, manual. Like a man. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AK Nacer. You can find me here at Flurn five days a week making videos to help you guys get better at Photoshop and photography. We're doing manual HDRs today, and the reason we're doing manual HDRs, um, you have two different types of HDRs. Basically, an HDR is when you take multiple different photos at different exposures and combine them together to get an image that looks like it has a high dynamic range. That's what the HDR stands for. Um, you can use programs like Photomatics or things like that. Actually, you can view a tutorial we have down below, a link to that, of a normal HDR. This is like using Photo Merge or something like that, or Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Um, so that's one way. What happens a lot of the time when you use a program like that is you wind up getting images that are either they're a little bit too flat or you get images that are like crazy funky like this like the you know the harry potter like hdr effect it's like everything's crazy bright and vivid in colors it doesn't look real at all um we're going to show you the manual hdr method today because you can get like a lot of control over your images and you can get things that actually look real they're going to look photo real and they're not going to look like you did an hdr but you're going to be able to get a large dynamic range so what you need to do, we're going to be working on images. I actually took these on Bald Head Island when my little brother got married. I took like a whole day and just took, did photos around the island. It was awesome. But um, when you're taking images like this, you're going to be able to expose for the sky in one, uh, in one photo, expose for like the mid-ground in the other, and expose for the shadows in another one. So these are all uh, one step apart. So I exposed properly. Sorry, these are two steps apart. Part. So I exposed properly, I exposed two stops underexposed and two stop overexposed. That's going to give me detail in my highlights and my shadows. So that's basically what we're doing and um, you can just put your camera on a tripod. In, in a lot of cameras, we've got episodes on that as well. Um, just type in HDR up in that box up there, or it might be up there. I don't know, I'm confused, I'm in a video right now. What? It's top right. It's top right? Okay. <laughs> So we have a specific order for the images and what you want to do is you want to put your underexposed image on the very bottom then followed by that you're going to want to put your overexposed image so you can see underexposed you see a lot of detail in the sky but there's not really any detail here in the foreground overexposed we see all this detail in our foreground but our sky is pretty much blown out so it's having to let more light which is going to blow out the sky so you want your underexposed image to be first then the overexposed image and then on top of that you actually want the properly exposed image so I'm going to show you guys basically how to combine the three of those together. So we have our underexposed image here. And what we want to do is I want to select out just the shadows. So I can select out the shadows and then tell my overexposed image to be visible there. It's really easy, actually. Just click on your bottom layer, which is the underexposed layer. Go up to Select. We'll go down to Color Range. And then I'm going to click here in my shadows. Now, based on your fuzziness, this is basically how much detail it's going to bring in from the over overexposed image. I would recommend doing something. If you don't... If you go too far up, it's going to bring in too much. Too far down, it's not really going to bring in enough. So I will go somewhere right about in the middle. Um, that looks good. It's really just a look thing, and you can change this at any time. But I would go, you know, your fuzziness right about 100. So we're going to hit OK. Basically, that's just going to turn all the darks into a selection. So now that those are a selection, I can use that selection in my light layer to define where this layer is visible. I know it's really confusing, but um, <laughs> I'll show you guys how it works. So you can see the darks are actually selected. Let's turn this layer on and we have it still selected. The selection selections are completely independent of layers. So you can have a selection on or off, layers on or off. They don't affect each other. So we have this layer on now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my layer mask and I want the layer mask. I want this to be not visible where the selection is not. It's like a double negative. But I, I want the opposite of the visibility for this. So what I'm going to do is I already have a layer mask. I'm going to hit command I on the layer mask. Okay, and that's going to invert my layer mask. And basically, this did the opposite of what, what I want. If I hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask, this is what my layer mask looks like. Now, I had to do that because you can't fill with white on a black layer mask. So I did the opposite of that, and now I'm going to click on my layer mask and hit Command I again. Okay, that was kind of like the long way to get around it, but basically, what we wound up with is just detail here in where there were shadows here. Now there's just detail in the highlights. Let's just go ahead and see, like a maybe a simpler version would be, let's try this. Let's fill this layer mask with black first. There we go. So we'll go here again. We'll go to select. We'll go to color range. Same thing. Hit OK. And then go here in this black layer mask where it's not visible. We want to make this layer just visible where the darks are. So I would hit like shift delete, fill that with white, and that's going to make this layer visible. There we go. So now what we have is 
detail here in the shadows. What I would recommend to you guys, it you do have detail in the highlight and shadows, but what happens is you end up with an image that's a little bit flat looking. And the reason is because it, like the highlights and the shadows are now basically the same exposure and you get something, it looks a little bit weird and a little bit flat. That's why I always recommend keeping the properly exposed image, the mid-tone exposure on the top. Let's make this invisible. It's gonna look a lot more contrasty. What I would do now is just kind of lower your, your, there we go, opacity, what am I trying to say? I would lower your opacity so you wind up with an image that looks like this. Now you can totally choose where you want these layers to be visible and not visible based on things like the, the sky or um, you know adding more layer masks and things like that. So we're starting off with a layer that's very underexposed. We're adding the brightness to the dark areas and then we're kind of evening everything out for the rest of the exposure. And what we wind up with based on you know where you click and your ratios, you're gonna wind up with detail all the way from the darkest darks. You can see there's detail all the way even in here and you get sky detail as well. So we're taking like the best of three different exposures and combining them together to be able to get detail all the way through the darks and through the lights. So it's a really hard thing to do in camera, but in Photoshop you can see it's not that hard to do. I don't know, it took a while to explain, but if you guys did it in practice, it's really not that hard. Just select out the darks, make that visible where the on the lighter layer so that lightens your darks and then take the properly exposed image on the top and lower the opacity. That's all you guys gotta do. So that's it. Have you guys ever done any HDR, either manual HDR or not manual HDR? If you guys have, let me know. Leave it in a comment box below because I think this is a really cool method because you can get like an HDR photo. You can get all of your range, but it's not going to look like an HDR photo. It's going to look like something you did more straight out of camera. So if you guys have any examples of this or any other HDR techniques, let me know in a comment box below. Exciting news, guys. Tomorrow I'm going to be featured on Framed, which is an awesome show. I can't wait. I'm going to be linking that today and tomorrow and you guys should check that out as well because we're going to be going through an entire shoot showing you guys like lighting how to collect like you know models and all kinds of resources for a photo shoot all the way through the post-production and a cool interview as well so make sure to check that out thanks so much for watching Florin guys i'll learn you later um uh that sucks i'm gonna have you cut that got it cut it